As time progresses, the internet is slowly destroying Meek Mill's career. Meek Mill, a 34-year-old rapper. Is this what you want, black women? Is this what you want, black women? He's beef with some of the biggest rappers in the industry, but the only beef that's impossible to win is one against the internet. What about this internet thing? Do you, do you know anything about that? See, the internet thrives off of negativity. They love to see celebrities make a fool of themselves. And trust me, Meek Mill does that very often. Donkey of the Day for Friday, July 31st goes to Meek Mill. As you'll find out, throughout his career, Meek would make an overabundant amount of dumb decisions online. I mean, from everything like creating absolutely horrible album covers. This is on the side of a bus where little girls can pull up and see this shit. To starting and then losing a beef against the light-skinned man from Canada. The whole Drake Meek situation. Is only a couple of the many reasons why the internet hates Meek Mill. They got you so fucked up, bro. <laughs> I mean, after 11 years of being famous, Meek still has no idea of how the internet works. His biggest flaw is that he wholeheartedly believes street rules actually apply online. And oh, he couldn't be further from the truth. They always care about the streets. We're online! Sadly, once Meek finally gained some fame and notoriety, he eventually also became known online as a giant clown and hypocrite. Because the more time he got to shine in the spotlight, the more he made himself look incredibly stupid. Come spit in my mouth, baby. What? He was once the most respected rapper amongst the fans, but now he's losing beefs, losing bets, and bunny hopping for white billionaires. Why are you doing bunny hops, Meek? But how did Meek Mill go from everyone's favorite rapper to just a corny hypocrite? Everybody know my name, Meek Millie flows flames, plus I got that fire man, puffers call me Lil Wayne. Robert Rameek Williams started his career off as a battle rapper, and as you just heard, he was damn good at it. So, Meek and his friends decided to create an underground rap group named the Bloodhounds. Yo, if, if I, I get, get smacked, smacked, somebody get murked, oh! Where after numerous run-ins with the law and plenty of mixtapes later, in 2011, he would eventually catch a buzz. But it was here that unfortunately Meek would make his first of many many bad decisions because he decided to sign to rick ross for zero dollars yes zero dollars meek signed to rick ross for zero dollars see meek pretty much signed a slave deal to rick ross's record label and that poor decision is still haunting him to this very day because 10 years later meek would end up beefing with rick ross claiming that he's never made a single penny from his music because you got him in a 1914 slave deal a harriet tubman joint that he signed when he was 19 and now he's 35. Sadly, the fat scumbag Rick Ross took full advantage of Meek Mill's ignorance. But fortunately for Meek, he's a very talented artist, so that exposure alone would be enough to take his career to the next level. Because just a year later, in 2012, he would release one of his biggest songs ever named Dreams and Nightmares. <laughs> This song came out 10 years ago, and yet you still hear it at every club party or function that you go to. And at this point, even the average white guy from Philly probably knows this song word for word. So despite all of his hardships and setbacks, in 2012, Meek Mill was beloved by everyone. You would see him being all buddy-buddy with people like DJ Khaled, Drake, or 50 Cent. And eventually, he would find love with the one and only Nicki Minaj. If you got Ultimately, Meek Mill had officially stamped himself as a legend in the rap game forever. However, one of those friendships I mentioned earlier would unfortunately end up doing him far more bad than good. The year 2015 marked a pivotal downfall in his career. It was the year the internet started to hate Meek Mill. The year Meek ruined his relationship with Drake, and honestly, it was all his fault. You know, as you've already seen, Meek really isn't the best at making good decisions. When the coke was out, I was selling coke. When the weed was out, I was selling weed. When the hammers was out, I had the hammers out. He's not really the sharpest tool in the toolbox, so unfortunately this time his poor choice of judgment would cost him his career and his reputation online. Because in June of 2015, Meek and Drake would drop a song together called Rico, where Meek got his little feelings hurt because he thought Drake dissed him on his own song. My man thought he was getting dissed, but the line, to me, your girl of your dream is really not a challenge or whatever. He took so much offense to this line from Drake's verse because at the time he was deeply in love with Nicki Minaj. I don't want to hear y'all put another rap on Nicki level. Make some noise for the hottest rap chick in the game. But generally everybody knows that Drake and Nicki have always been pretty 
friendly. So, because of Meek's fragile ego, he thought Drake was blatantly poking fun at their relationship. However, unfortunately for Drake, Meek's good friend DJ Drama ended up telling him that, Bro, he's not dissing you. Because Drake didn't even write that line to begin with. Matter of fact, he told him that Drake didn't even write his entire verse of that song. But well, those weren't technically his bars. So, it was here, at this exact moment, where Mr. Twitter Fingers himself was brought to life. Meek would unknowingly ruin his own career when he went straight to Twitter with this newfound information and told the world that Drake actually had a ghostwriter. He said, stop comparing Drake to me. He don't write his own raps. That's why he ain't tweet my album, because we found out. Like I've already told you, Meek Mill has made a laundry list of bad choices in his career. But this one was undeniably the worst. And, you know, I think he just took a hard left. Because this one tweet would send the internet into a frenzy. And as you could expect, Drake was getting an overwhelming amount of hate from just about anyone with a Twitter account. So honestly, Meek probably thought after letting off that big ghostwriting bomb, he had one off just that alone. However, exposing the biggest artists in the industry definitely comes with serious repercussions. Drake responded with his first diss track against Meek Mill that was apparently just a test to see if the beef was even real. Cause you know, you never know how calculated someone's plan is. Maybe they've been sitting on the record for six months. They hated you all this time. But that wasn't the case though. Meek Mill actually didn't plan for this at all. When the guy lashed back, Adam, he wasn't ready. For some reason he exposed the nigga and I guess didn't expect for him to have the balls to respond. Meek tried to act like he didn't see the diss, like he just didn't care. I'm not entertaining no rap slash real beef over Drake. So instead of letting go of his ego and just dissing Drake back, Meek would get his thumbs ready to go on Twitter once again, but this time to tweet about how bad Drake's first diss supposedly was. But this unfortunately was yet another bad decision made by Meek because it showed that even though he was on the internet all the time, he didn't understand how it actually worked. Podcast, I, we don't even know what a podcast is. See, maybe to the streets, ignoring the light-skinned nigga with glasses was the cool thing to do, but to the internet, it made him look like a hypocrite, like he was backing down from Drake. That's why people online expected a response from Meek because I mean, that's where he came from. Now, 99 mm. pounds, but a bitch ain't one of them, cause I'm a real nigga. I don't take care of none of them. Meek started his career off as a battle rapper with Dusty Jail Braids. And at the same time, he's also the person who started this entire beef in the first place. That's why him not responding would definitely piss off a lot of people. Nigga, how long does it take for you to respond? What's up with y'all? Since when do we want rappers to rap? So to me and everyone else, Meek responding with his own diss track seemed like the obvious thing that should happen. However, it wasn't so obvious to Meek because unfortunately he chose to keep tweeting and stay silent musically, which obviously disappointed his fans and the people that supported him online. It would have been better if he just responded. Like if he had a, a decent response, just put it out. Meek pretending to ignore Drake would only help turn his fans against him and further empower all of his haters on online but fortunately for drake he actually understands the internet so he took full advantage of meek mill's ignorance i don't think anybody really expected me to just jump out there and, and defend myself and go and go first and twice and, 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 and second <laughs> yeah. drake dropped his second diss track before meek could even do his first he dropped two on your ass you ain't dropped one so on july 29th in 2015 the day back to back dropped meek's career and his already damaged reputation online plummeted to the ground it's like all right well if we're talking about music let me just show you better than i can tweet you you know or better than i can text you let me i'm just gonna show you what i'm about and he took meek mill's arm and stuck it up his ass and meek mill's hand came out of his mouth and then he kicked him down a motherfucking steps into a burning pit that's how bad it was like it was it was really bad like, back to back was the only diss track to ever be nominated for a grammy it was like the perfect diss track not because drake exposed some crazy wild shit about meek no it mastered the balance between being a diss track and just a standalone catchy good ass song. And I just thought it was dope that Drake responded with bars. However, back to back alone wasn't what actually ended Meek's career. What destroyed it was when once again the internet went berserk, but this time Meek Mill was on the receiving end of it. Donkey of the day for Friday, July 31st goes to Meek Mill. They got you so fucked up, bro. They got you big. They created so many memes and clowned him so bad, it's almost absurd to even think about. And most of the jokes were just them poking fun at his relationship with Nicki Minaj because of this one incredible line from Back to Back. You love it and you gotta get a world tour. You gotta world tour and a 
Everyone knew that using Nikki to make fun of him would dig deep into his soul. Hell, even a Canadian politician joined in on the fun. So ultimately, Meek's insecurities played a major role in his own demise. Because before this point in his career, he never really faced anywhere close to this level of internet hate or scrutiny. So now that it was unfortunately happening to him, it might sound funny, but Meek turned his back on the internet. At the time, Meek felt like the streets opinion was the only thing that really mattered. In real life, I came from the streets. In real life, I caught cases, had 10 codes. So instead of just accepting his loss and moving on, he became a sore loser. He pretty much said that anyone critiquing him online were just internet trolls and haters. So he treated people online like their opinions didn't mean shit, like they weren't the ones that were once showering him with love. Meek even went as far as referring to everyone online as just and only bots. Meek thinks there's this Drake conspiracy or, well now also Nikki conspiracy where Nikki and Drake have paid off a bunch of people. His manager told me that he believes Drake is paying niggas to put L's in the comment section. Literally pain bots to just do shit. It's hilarious how someone who tweets so much became so out of touch with the internet that he tricked himself to believe bots were actually spamming L's in his comment section and not real human beings. See, the music in the diss tracks isn't what actually won Drake this beef. It was the internet. And it's because Drake actually understood that the streets don't control the public opinion. It's the fans online and the internet that do. So he dug Meek's grave even deeper by leaning into the memes and comments and using them to his advantage. Yes, Meek would eventually respond with his own diss track, but it was just too late. And it was garbage. It was late. Why was it so bad, do you think? And then why would Meek be so whack in response to <laughs> Why? Why? I mean, everything he had said on his disc, he had already tweeted out for the world to see. And everyone had already said he lost because he spent a week prior to his response bitching and complaining about comments online while the internet dogpiled on him even more. The summer of 2015 was literal hell for Meek Mill and would actually lay out the foundation for him to be forever clowned and hated online. And it sucks because I actually think Meek Mill is an amazing artist, but instead of just accepting his loss and growing from it, Pete somehow made it worse. Meek entered the first stage of grief. He went into full denial mode. Do you consider that whole time a loss, a win, or a learning experience? I consider it as a win. You can call it confidence, you can call it whatever you want, but I see it as someone who is completely unwilling to learn from his own mistakes. Meaning that he's gonna keep doing the same exact shit that got him here in the first place. And to no one's surprise, that's exactly what he did. Over the years after his fallout with Drake, Meek would continually get clowned and ridiculed over and over and over again online because each time he did something incredibly dumb, <laughs> It was amplified even more simply because the internet didn't like him. No, no, give me 10 push ups and I'm gonna give you uh, $20 right now. We ain't giving out no free money. In 2017, he posted this tasteless video where he made an old homeless man do 20 push ups for $20. Dumb shit he put online like this is why it became a trend to hate on Meek Mill. Everything from tweeting about vibrating panties to crashing his bike into a parked car to even posting a picture of him eating french fries in a pool all gave a reason for the internet to hate on him even more. Matter of fact, it's gotten to a point where people don't even believe he's a real person. What I'm trying to show you is no one really hates him for what really matters, his music. But ever since the Drake beef, his online reputation has been on a steady decline, which it would only get worse because in 2020, he fell into yet another beef, but this time it was with two people at once. And it all started once again from a single tweet. You know, at the time, Meek was one of the more vocal rappers who spoke out against 6 9 when he snitched, and although Takashi deserved it, Meek fucked up because you can't win internet beef against 6 9 Meek Mill, ever since Nicki left you, you are a nobody. Internet beef is what fuels his career. So beefing online with 6 9 is like falling into quicksand, because once you get in it, he's damn sure not letting you out. And of course, Mr. Twitter Fingers himself would fall right into the trap. Takashi was doing shit when he was on. I still wasn't looking at him like he was real. It looked like he was living a life that Ooh, two, two, three, three, half, way up. wasn't his life. Mm -hmm. Meek hated 6 9 so much that he even started beefing with DJ Academics for posting 6 9 on his page. He claimed that Academics was the only reason 6 9 was still popular, and he even threatened to cancel act because he was apparently bad for the culture. He clearly thinks he's like some, you know, authoritarian figure of hip hop. Meek, 
You can't cancel anyone. See, I guess Meek thought since he was this big bad bully, he could try to control the media. However, it ended up biting him in the ass because while condemning 6ix9ine for snitching, Takashi called him out for working with a snitch. Your executive is a rat, so you pick and choose? Because if you don't want to be around rats completely, you're with a rat right there. She cooperated for the DEA. This is Desiree Perez. This is Meek Mill. And this is just one of the many hypocrisies that Meek Mill would be caught up in during this beef. You know, and you would think he would learn by now. It's like every time he calls somebody out on Twitter, it just backfires immensely. And this beef was no different because since the internet is always looking for yet another reason to hate on Meek Mill, regardless of what he would say back to 6ix9ine, Meek was still gonna lose. So he realized that the only way to beat him was to find a way to get his greasy little hands on 6ix9ine in person. Meek Mill claimed that he was gonna be the one to crush 6ix9ine, the person to finally make an example out of him. And when the 1% chance that they would actually see each other face to face finally happened, That's a fact, you That's a fact, you And you security! This is security! Mr. Twitterfingers and the man child with rainbow hair yelled back and forth at each other behind their big old security guards. What y'all trying to get me locked up? Weirdo. What y'all weirdos want to get me locked up? And look, I'm not saying that Meek should have hit or did something to 6ix9ine, but. Unfortunately, everyone online doesn't think like me. See, Meek portrays himself as this big, bad, tough guy, right? So, just sitting there bickering back and forth with a lame like Takashi wouldn't do anything but damage his reputation even more. And after their little shouting match took place, Meek Mill had the audacity to run to Twitter and say this. Why did he pick me? What the fuck? LOL. Like he wasn't the one talking crazy about 6ix9ine ever since he snitched. Meek got caught up in a numerous amount of contradictions, so you can only imagine how far, once again, his online reputation plummeted. Meek Mill will forever be known online as an amazing artist, but also a corny hypocrite. And if you want to see even bigger hypocrites than Meek, click the video on the screen and meet the rappers who the internet exposed for their fake personas, their fake personalities, and worst of all, their fake lifestyles.